What's up guys? Today it is finally time to get back on the W Body Tech car. This 03 is today getting springs and struts all the way around. Okay, so I've done an in-depth or a more in-depth video on strut changes before. I'll leave the link for that in the description if anyone wants to see it. Other than that, I'm just gonna kind of roughly go back through what we're doing here. We're gonna take these two nuts off, knock these two spline bolts out that way. Then there's just your three 15 millimeters up here and we can pull the whole thing out. Once I get it out, I'll show you the modifications we're gonna make to upgrade to these other ones. first modification we've got is going to be to the bump stops now in the front these are probably going to be already assembled for you the bump stop is up in there but all you need to do is just kind of squeeze and pop this off and then you can work this out the bottom here and all we're going to do I've done this with a lot of my lowered cars is we're going to take the bottom piece of this bump stop off and that is just to give the suspension a little bit more travel before it bottoms out and I'm just going to do that using a battery powered Sawzall just like this there you go then just work it back into the sleeve the opposite direction that it came out And when you get it far enough in here, it will pop right back up into this upper seat. It's a little tricky sometimes to get it in there right, but once it's sat in there like that, pop that back together, pop this back on, you're ready to put that on the new strut. So the next thing to do is to build out the new strut. Now, we are using DNA springs, and before anyone starts the, the eBay bashing, I don't know that he's going to use these forever. It's entirely possible this is just a temporary thing, but this is what we decided on. They are a really high spring rate. Um, look up my video on the eBay springs on my 97 for more information on that. But a couple things to look at when you're putting these together. Right here, this wider section is going to face the outside of the car make sure that this spacer has the fattest part of it away from that side then your bearing on top of it then also because these dna springs are a little wider up here than stock just a hair i recommend doing one of these isolators on top to help take up space just to keep them quiet and to make sure that everything goes together correctly and the last thing we're gonna to top it off with is anti-pogo washers on the top. If you don't have any anti-pogo washers, don't worry about it, go to any junkyard and just grab the front lower subframe bushing uh, washers. Super easy to get out. And um, uh, most pull-aparts will give them to you for almost nothing. Then the next thing to do with lowering springs, it's usually not too hard to put the spring on the strut. You would have to compress factory springs but because these lower, lowering springs are smaller, it's not as hard. Make sure your lower seat's there. Make sure this is here with the washer on top. Never install these without this washer. Then just line up the spring with the lower seat where it needs to go. Sit that down, line up this upper part. 
Make sure everything lines up there. Then just have the new nut and the washer ready to go. And you can wiggle and push down and at the correct angle. Those will go on through like that. Then you can hold it down, stick the washer on top, and start your nut. If you're lucky, I'm not like me. Once you've got it started, a couple threads, we'll just run it over and tighten it up. And when you put them back in, so most of the new mounts, which I recommend always replacing when you do these, will come with new nuts also. Then you're just going to remember which direction that top needs to face. Push it through from the bottom, line up the studs, and when you get them in there, hold them with one hand and start them with the other. Then I would leave them loose so that this moves around better long enough to get the bottom lined up. Then you're just going to line the bottom up like this and get one of the factory bolts in there and start it on the top. And that is a flying bolt. So you will have to get that knocked in there to get it started. Then, because we're lowering this, and alignment may be an issue, we're gonna be installing these camber bolts on the bottom at the same time. I don't have an alignment machine at my house, obviously, so we will not be doing that here, but this will just make sure that when he gets ready to align it, the technician has all the adjustment that he needs. And with these, it's just a matter of trying to put them in neutral so that you're not too far off one direction or the other just so the alignment tech can then come back and do what he needs to do so you can just kind of eyeball it and if they look pretty close then that's about all you can do at home Beyond that, you really need an alignment machine, which I doubt anyone's got sitting around at their house. So after taking a short break and after putting the front wheels back on and having them torqued back and everything, I am now on to the back. The rear is pretty much the same as the front. And once again, I already have a video on that. So I'm not going to go too in depth on how that's done, but I've just got to swap, swap both out. But let me show you how I built out the struts on that one because it is a little bit different on the rears. I did a couple things differently um, just because it requires a couple extra steps. So basically, I cut the bump stop just like we did on the front, so that's the same. The other problem though is, and if you watched my review of the DNA springs earlier in my channel, you'll know this already. The rear springs are too long stock because they will lift the back of the car up an additional probably half inch to an inch if you put them on like they are so the first thing i did was cut one coil exactly off of this spring and then paint the end of the spring with a high temp paint so that that steel is not exposed next let me make sure this stays in here the next thing i did all this stuff is new here but because this spring is kind of short when it's uncoiled like this, it doesn't have much pressure on it. And I have had problems in the past with my 97 of when you jack it up or lift it, this spring can unseat. And if you don't see it, you sit it back down and the spring will pop off the side or something like that. So the other thing I like to do is take an industrial zip tie and put one right here just to hold that spring tight against this perch. Now that's not holding any of the pressure from the car or any weight or anything. All of that is still here. That's just so that when you unload it, this spring can't move. So other than that, it's just time to get these back in the car. Okay, and just to show you guys another thing that I'm doing before I take these all the way out, I am gonna use this camber gauge sat on here and zeroed because it's adjustable. Two set to zero, 
That way, when I go to set this back up, I can set it back exactly where it was, so at least I'm not making it any worse. So after reinstalling the rear, we now have struts, we have springs, we have mounts, we have control arms, bushings, ball joints, tie rods. We have all kinds of new suspension parts. So are you ready for the grand reveal of what this looks like and drives like? Not yet. One more video in this series and it'll be time for the grand reveal. I just wanna save it for that. So the next video in this series is gonna be subframe bushings, front and rear, all the way around. Then we'll really take a look at this setup and see what it's like. So make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so you get the notification when that comes out. And make sure you like this video. It helps my channel. It helps the video get out. Share it if you'd like to. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.